If you have an app idea and you're new to the development space, you may have started to come across terms such as native apps and web apps. What's the difference between the two? And which one's gonna be the right option for your particular app idea, for you as the app builder maintaining it behind the scenes, as well as your users' front end experiences? There are plenty of applications that can go either way but there are some key differences that may make one approach better suited than the other. In this video, we're gonna break down those differences between native apps and web apps, and make sure you watch to the end because we're also gonna talk about progressive web apps or PWAs and see how those fit into all of this as well. Native apps are built to work on specific operating systems for specific devices, such as Apple's iOS on iPhones and iPads, or Androids like Google Pixels and Samsung Galaxies. These apps need to be downloaded to the device from the respective app stores. Web apps, on the other hand, are internet-based and are accessed through browsers like Safari and Chrome from any device running on any operating system. There's no download involved, but you do have to have access to the internet to use the app, just like a website. Let's dig into these differences a bit more, starting with device compatibility and how that may affect the user experience in your app. Native apps are built to run on the devices they're installed on, which allows them to integrate with device features such as the camera, photo library, the accelerometer, GPS, and more. Native apps can also inherit the look and feel of the device's operating system, which gives them a more integrated appearance. Native apps also have the capability to work offline and if necessary, sync data when back online, allowing users to continue working with the app with little interruption. In other words, native apps can give users a more seamless experience, which may be more noticeable in mobile devices such as phones and tablets. Now, what about web apps? Since web apps are accessed through browsers, the only requirement is that the user is connected to the internet. For the most part, it doesn't matter how old your device is, what operating system you're running, or even what browser you're using to access the app. And again, since everything is web-based, users don't need to worry about downloading a program and the interface is gonna look the same everywhere. Plus, any published changes made to the app are instantly available. You usually just need to refresh your web page. With that said, since web apps have to work on a wider variety of devices and web clients, there may be some differences in the way the app's interface is rendered across browsers. For example, support for unique fonts and more involved animations may be a little different between browsers. In our experience, this doesn't come up a lot with newer devices and running apps on updated browsers, but it is something to watch out for as a web app builder, which we'll talk more about in a moment. So for web apps, access is gonna be more universal and the extent of any visual differences that you may see across browsers, if any, is just gonna depend on the details of the app's design. Now let's look at the differences between native and web apps for the person who has to build and maintain the application behind the scenes. Native apps are gonna have more hoops to jump through. First, iOS and Android apps are each built with their own programming language. Traditionally, native app developers are working with code to build their product and need to do so separately for each platform. There are, of course, app building tools out there that help you build native apps without code and then export the underlying code base you need to submit to the app stores on each platform. Speaking of the app stores, this is one of the biggest differences between native and web apps. Native apps have to be submitted to the app stores and go through an approval process before they're published and made available to download. Depending on what you're building, that approval process may be challenging as there are typically strict rules around app content, monetization, apps for kids, data security, and more. While this can make the publishing process tedious, remember that the rules are in place to maintain good standards and security. These serve as a consistent quality control across the entire marketplace. In addition to this, since updates to native apps means changes to the code base, you have to publish and manage versions over the lifetime of the app. This means some of your app users may be engaging with older versions of the app while others are on newer versions. Now for web apps, you're creating a single code base that isn't going to an app store. Therefore, no one's approving the application. You have a lot more flexibility in what you can build. But of course, with great power comes great responsibility. So you wanna make sure that you have the right quality control in place to ensure a valuable and safe experience for your users. Building a web app is much more like building a data-driven website. Aside from the front end designs, you'll still have a database to manage, logic to create to make it interactive, and potentially integrations with other tools and services you may wanna to connect to. These particular components aren't unique to web apps, but while you're typically expected to code everything in a native environment, there are many tools out there that you can use to build your entire web app end to end completely without code. In other words, you don't need to worry about figuring out HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or any of that to get your web app up and running. 
Web apps are generally easier to maintain because of the single code base and the fact that any changes you publish are instantly available to your users. Of course, without an app store to publish your app to, you have less immediate exposure and need to put in more work to market the app and grow its user base. Okay, so what about the similarities between these two? Well, part of the reason why there's so much comparison between native and web apps is that these days you can accomplish so much of the same functionality either way you go. Both native and web apps can be built with responsive design, which means the front end interface is gonna to adapt to the width of your screen. Desktops, for example, have more room, so designs are generally taking up more width with less vertical scroll. You typically have persistent menus, things like that. Whereas mobile devices are more narrow, so designs tend to collapse into vertical layouts with more scrolling, which feels more natural on a smaller screen. You typically don't see as much at once. And tablets are gonna be somewhere in the middle. In some cases, apps are designed specifically for tablets. It just depends on what you're doing. Responsive design is expected these days, so you're not gonna miss out on including that no matter which approach you take with your app. Next, both native and web apps can support user authentication, meaning your users can log in with secure credentials to access specific pages, data, and functions. Just depends on what logic you put into it. Not only is this true for engaging with the app itself, but also accessing third-party resources through integrations. For example, let's say that you've built a financial tracking app that has a bank account integration to pull in transactions. This would be an extra layer of authentication that you can accomplish with both native and web apps. Next, both native and web apps can support many of the same functions, such as data entry, search, notifications, calculations, messaging, payments, and more. Hey, real quick, if you're finding this helpful, we've put together a complete guide to help you figure out if Bubble.io is the right platform for building your app. You can check it out over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash bubble hyphen guide. I've also put the link in the description below. As you can see, this guide walks through everything from pricing to performance, IP ownership, and more. Head to coachingnocodeapps.com slash bubble hyphen guide to get immediate access. When you read about native apps and web apps, you typically see mentions of progressive web apps or PWAs. How do these fit in? A PWA is a web application that delivers a native-like experience. Build-wise, a PWA is just like building a web app, but there are some key layers you can add to it that make it more like a native app. For example, you can add a PWA to your device's home screen with an icon and a splash screen just like a native app. PWAs can detect when you're offline, and in some cases still work without an internet connection. PWAs can send push notifications just like native apps, and they can access some of your device's hardware like GPS, camera, microphone. And PWAs are designed to use minimal data to maintain high performance. If you've already built out a web app, you can turn it into a PWA easily with no-code tools like Progressier and take advantage of those native-like layers. All right, so let's summarize all of this into some pros and cons so that you can make the right decision for your app. And I'm gonna break this down into maintenance, discoverability, and cost. For the build and maintenance of the app, native apps are more work, there's no doubt about it. Since every platform runs off its own programming language, you may see yourself building your app more than once. If you're looking to build a native app without code, you'll wanna find an app builder that can help you cut down on duplicating any work and export the necessary files for each platform. Native apps also need to go through an app store approval process, which depending on your app could be challenging. While these things create more work for you, the trade-off could be worth it if you need more integrated access to device hardware and security features and a more integrated presence on the device in general. Now, web apps can be much faster to create, especially with no code building platforms. There's no approval process to go through, which can give you more freedom in how you monetize your app. However, web apps must have an internet connection to work. And depending on the industry you're building for, this could be a deal breaker. Discoverability is also something you'll want to consider if you're not building an internal tool. Native apps have the major benefit of being listed in a formal store. Users can more easily find you by searching through the stores and reading reviews, so there's some built-in exposure. Web apps, on the other hand, need to rely on traditional marketing efforts, like SEO strategy. There's not necessarily a right or wrong here. Think about where you'd expect your users to look for you to help steer you in a direction when considering discoverability. Are they more likely to search for a specific app to address the problems your app solves? Or are they more likely to search Google or YouTube first using keywords that may lead them to you? 
Maybe it's both, but again, it is something to consider. Now, cost may be one of your biggest driving factors when deciding native versus web, because it can be closely linked to your development timeline as well. You can expect native apps to be more expensive than web apps to create and maintain. Whether you're building yourself or hiring someone to build an app for you, native apps are higher ticket items. Building in multiple languages requires more expertise and often more time. If your app is rejected by an app store, you may need to make significant changes, again, costing you more money and time. Web apps have a significantly lower barrier to entry, not because the finished product is of lower quality, far from it, but because the underlying code of a web app just isn't as complex compared to that of a native equivalent. You don't need to optimize for specific operating systems and devices. You're creating a single code base, already reducing the amount of time you're spending compared to native, and there are many tools and frameworks out there to help you build your app completely without code. Now, if you're still on the fence about which is the right approach for you, I'm gonna go through a few examples here of the types of apps you would typically find in native versus web environments. Just remember that every app is different. There's always exceptions, and the decision is really gonna come down to your own technical, practical, and even personal preferences. Let's start with native apps. Games is one of the first categories I always think is best served in a native environment, especially when you need to access device hardware, such as the gyroscope, for a more immersive experience. Multimedia editors are similar. These types of apps can be resource intensive, so you'll want to take advantage of the device's processing power, memory, and general hardware to support that kind of work. Navigation. This is another category where you want to take advantage of your device's true GPS systems so that you can get an accurate location read. Any type of application that offers offline content to download, think Spotify, Audible, Kindle, and Netflix. Because native apps have offline capability, being able to access that content within the application, even when you're not connected, is a huge benefit. For web applications, remember that these are accessed through browsers, but are more interactive and typically more data-driven compared to static websites. So productivity tools like Gmail, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Trello, and Notion are all great candidates for web apps, particularly because they're usually collaborative tools that you'd want to be online for so you can work with other people in real time. Marketplaces like Airbnb, Upwork, and Etsy are all prime examples of business-oriented web apps that support user-to-user -user payments and powerful search. Finance tools like QuickBooks Online and Monarch are great examples of web apps that have integrated with important data sources like bank accounts behind the scenes. And as far as PWAs go, Apps with high volumes of communication, like Twitter Lite, can really leverage the performance benefits of progressive web apps compared to their heavier native app counterparts. And apps that need to be accessed in areas with slower connection speeds or even on lower end devices, such as Uber, can benefit from the PWA format as well. All right, I hope that was helpful. And if it was, the content you're about to see on the next screen will help you take things even further.